We begin with the house orientation and layout. And so we started off by just kind of doing some rough marking and getting it kind of close to where we thought it would be. And then we set about trying to get it oriented exactly facing south. We, the southward orientation is real important for our design and there's lots of benefits. And so it was actually a real challenge to get it oriented directly south um, because I couldn't find a compass that worked very well and the apps on my phone didn't work very well. They would just, the, the readings didn't repeat and, and they didn't uh, concur with each other. And so that was really a challenge. Finally just got the best compass I could find and, and used it and went with that reading. So hopefully it's close to true south, the main part of the house facing true south. Once we had kind of the southward side, we just measured out the full length of the house along that southward side. And then I got onto an online calculator and found out what the diagonal should be. Just put in the width and length of your foundation and it'll give you what the diagonal should be. And so once I had the diagonal, we just kept making adjustments to the stakes until the diagonal was exactly the same or as close to, as we could get it to the same in both directions. So once all of the lengths and widths were correct and the diagonals were correct, then we knew we had it square. And so once we got all that done, we were ready to move on to the next step. Once we had some good tall stakes in marking the corners of the house site, it was time to build up the pad. The pad slopes slightly in two directions. Um, about a foot to 18 inches over the length of the house. So we needed to build it up enough on one side to make up for that. And then also we needed to build up the house above the grade in case there was a major rain event and some flooding that the water level wouldn't reach our house. And so it set about here to bring in dirt from other areas of the property to fill and compact the pad location. Uh, it just so happened that there was a, a mound that was pretty clear of vegetation, pretty close to the building site, and so that's the first place I went to to get the dirt. And we were able to get about half or a little over half of the dirt we needed uh, for the pad from that one location. To build up the pad, I started by wetting down the area that I wanted to build up with, with a, just a garden hose from our well. And then I started bringing in dirt and dumping it, and I brought in enough dirt that I thought I, it would you know, build up about six inches and then I would wet that down. Once I got it wet down, I would go over it with the front bucket and just kind of scrape it while I was going backwards in order to flatten it out and smooth it out. I would then wet it down again and drive the backhoe back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, crisscross um, over it multiple times in order to compact it. And then I would wet it down again uh, before I started with the next layer. So for the last half or maybe third of the pad buildup, I, I needed more dirt, kind of ran out in the spot that I was digging originally. So we found another spot that wasn't too far away, kind of for us finding something that didn't have a lot of vegetation that we had to sift out, because uh, any kind of vegetable matter, you know, will just decay and, and, you know, cause unwanted settlement. So you want dirt that's as free as vegetable matter as you can. So anyway, we found another spot that was kind of ripe for that and cleared off a, a few bushes and uh, some grass and some stumps and then I was able to get the rest of what I needed from that location. So I was trying to build it up in, you know, six inch lifts at a time with lots of moistening and compacting in between with the, the goal of having a, a nicely compacted pad that wouldn't settle over time. And probably the most, you know, critical part of that is getting the moisture content in the soil correct. You don't want it, you know, too wet so that it's, it's muddy, but you also don't want it too dry. But if you can get that moisture content just right, then driving over it with the backhoe will allow it to compact uh, quite densely. We ended up building up the pad about one foot on the on one side and a little over two feet, two, two and a half feet on the other side. Once I got close, I shot the levels with the transit to make sure that, you know, we were level and true across the surface of the pad. And then I set about to do the final marking so I could dig. So 
we kind of reset and retested all of our borders and boundaries. We put up new stakes and new strings to, to mark the border of the footer. And then I went along with a can of spray paint and just kind of sprayed in everything right where the line was so that then I could take down my string and I could you know, just follow that line with the backhoe. And that actually worked pretty well. I was able to align the backhoe with the stakes and, and you know, follow that painted line. And uh, that really helped to keep it, keep it straight as I was digging. When I rented out the backhoe, I, I ordered an extra bucket with it because I knew I was going to be you know, building the septic, which I needed a two-foot bucket for, and building the foundation, which I needed a one-foot bucket for. So I got both, and they didn't charge too much for that second, so it worked out pretty good. And, and it's, it was a quick change bucket setup that John Deere has, and so it was actually pretty easy to, you know, change it up pretty much by myself. Kind of using the backhoe to, to do most of the work there, just one pin that I had to, to remove, and it was a pretty simple process to change that out, and then I was ready to get started on the foundation. The pin was just a little bit of a challenge to get out. It wasn't too bad, but, you know, they, they get dry and they kind of rust in a little bit, so took a little bit of uh, persuasion and, and working to get it out. I always try to be careful, you know, not to force it too much or have to use a hammer or anything because you can damage the pin, you can cause, you know, galding, which just makes the problem even worse. So I just kind of patiently worked it back and forth. And when I went to put it in, I, I made sure to, you know, spray with a lubricant so that it would, it would go in easier and be easier to remove the next time. Once everything was marked, I was able to set up with the backhoe and start digging out the trenches. The bucket width uh, worked really well. Um, you know, it, it made a, a hole a little over 12 inches, 13, 14 inches wide, which is what I was targeting for my uh, foundation footer anyway. And I was planning on, you know, pouring the footer directly into the trench. And so I was trying to be careful not to make it any wider than it needed to be or just be as precise as I could and avoid um, cave-ins because I knew I'd be digging those out in order to pour the footer later. So, And as far as getting it to depth, I just got out occasionally and checked it with the tape measure and just tried to take my time and get it as close as I could. I ended up going about 28 inches deep on the foundation. That got me down to, or down actually a little bit below virgin soil on the low side of the pad. So I wanted to make sure that the footer was, was not resting on fill, that it was resting on virgin soil gives it a lot more integrity and so that's why I chose that depth and that gets it well below frost line. While I was at it I went ahead and dug in uh, some of the trenches for the utilities. I knew I would want to bring in the septic line and the gray water line you know in through the foundation so I went ahead and dug the trenches for that, the trench going to my tank and also the trenches uh, on the inside of the pad going to both bathrooms and the kitchen that I'll be running my drains in. So I went ahead and used the backhoe to dig those out while I was at it and actually dug some kind of shallow footers for two of the interior walls that I wanted to give some extra support to. So kind of did all that, did all that at the same time. I knew once I completed the perimeter footing that I wouldn't be able to get the backhoe in to do in, any more of that interior work. And it did end up being, I still had some cave-ins. There was still a, a good amount of shoveling that I had to do. To clear off the top edges and to, you know, get the, the base, the you know, bottom of the trench level. But it actually went fairly fast, but it was some good hard work. I did have a close call while I was digging the trenches. I was working in the area where I knew I had put in my electric and water lines, and I was I knew exactly where the line was because I'd marked it with with markers, and I knew I was going to be crossing it when I dug that particular trench. But it's amazing how quickly you can get spaced off when you're doing that kind of thing. And uh, anyway, I ended up just digging right on top of that area. And one bucketful came up with a piece of that marking tape that I'd put in. And that's when I realized that I'd almost hit the line, so I, I jumped off to make sure I hadn't actually hit it, but, and I hadn't. So it, it saved me, and then it did what it's supposed to do. You know, it, it warned you when you're digging too close to your line, so I was really glad I put that in, and it actually uh, saved me from hitting my line, even though, I, even though I knew exactly where the line was and was trying to remember to be careful. I still got distracted and ended end up saving me, so... Glad I put that in. One more thing, the power line was not energized when I was digging, so there wasn't any uh, danger of electrocution there. 
Uh, so that wasn't a concern. It's, I was just concerned about damaging the line and having to do repair. So today is Friday, July 9th. We're getting ready to go into town and get the forms and rebar for our house foundation. So pretty exciting stuff. Red spent the morning figuring out how he wants to do it. He really hadn't decided until this morning. And we just need to hook up the trailer and go into town and get a bunch of wood and rebar. 